Hi, uh, it's me again, Joe, and I'm in my basement. And um, I got a couple, I've been sick for a while, caught the flu, it really knocked me off my feet, but I'm feeling a lot better. And um, I got some emails, and I got a couple, a lot of my friends who I work with um, have been asking me a bunch of different questions. So I'm going to make a bunch of these little mini videos focusing on issues and comic books and storylines that I think are really, really great. And I want to start with this one because this is the one that basically started it all for me. Uh, the Coming of Galactus, issue 48 of the Fantastic Four. Uh, for me, it was the most powerful story that I have ever read in a comic book. Uh, written by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack Kirby. Um, it was the storyline in which basically started it all for me. Uh, this is not the one, uh, I think this is the original one I brought, I'm not sure. And But uh, I know at this time period, uh, my brother and I used to have a lot of fights and he destroyed a lot of my comic books from this time period so a lot of stuff even though it's from it's you know the origin it's from the time period i don't know if i brought it in the comic book stores when it was 12 cents or i brought it later on ebay when it was a little bit more but it's a three-part storyline um basically you know everybody if you read if you know anything about comic books you should know you probably know the story already but just in case you don't basically uh this cosmic being galactus who basically lives off of planets, and uh, he's basically coming to feed on Earth. And the Watcher basically, it, it basically gave introduction of the Watcher, this being who basically observes, and uh, this introduction of this character, Silver Surfer, who's a hero for Galactus, basically a guy who goes out and brings him his lunch, basically. And, um, and Reed Richards and uh, the Fantastic Four basically had to, with the help of the watcher had to stop galactus from devouring the planet now if some weird chance if you never read the story i don't i don't ruin the ending for it. if you did read the story you know what happened uh but for me it was the best issue in the world it was a time where comic books where the storytelling and the art was so great you didn't need variant covers you didn't need gimmicks or any sort of like sales gimmicks to get you to buy this issue this is one of my little pet peeves with today they have like these everybody makes these variant uh covers and it, you're in this psychological thing where you feel the need to go out there and get all these covers and but when you realize realize that you get you get like this 12 different covers of one book yeah, you got all the covers, but you still have the one crappy story that's in the book. And you figure for 12 cents, you, you know, even though, this, you know, sign and economy was different back then than compared to now, which is understandable, um, the, the price difference. But you figure for 12 cents, these guys wrote something, created something, put it out on time, cre and created something that basically, decades later, it's still one of the greatest books, comic books ever written, in my opinion. You know, your opinion might differ, and I, and I respect that. If you, just out of care, just as a side note, if you choose, if you want to go and look for the uh, this issue, and it, you see it on eBay, it's a little, it's going to probably be a little expensive. Uh, my suggestion is, if you can, if you can find it, try to find the. Um, the omnibus, the the sister volume two, actually. Uh, there's two different covers on it, of course, variant again. Um, but um, this basically this time frame of all these issues, the time frame is in here. I think it's. I don't know off the top of my head. I I want to say, I don't know what issue it starts with. Um, I don't want to give you the wrong information, but. Um, it starts off. It looks like it starts off with issue thirty-one and goes all the way to issue sixty. If I'm not, if I'm mis if I'm not mistaken. But this is a great way to get the stories, and this is going to cost you a pretty penny too. But 
it's cheaper in the long run to get this if you don't have the money to track down the actual issues on eBay or a comic store. Um, I I am a big fan of story, and I'm not in this to you know build up a collection and to sell it and buy myself something down the road or something like that. I am a I'm a collector. I'm not in it for the money so much. But um, I, I was, like I was originally saying, Stanley and Jack Kirby have written and created some of the best comic books ever uh, between the time period from issue 48 of Fantastic Four to roughly, I think I want to say it's like 100 or 101 or something around there. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's 101. I always never really was sure about that. But I think it's either 100 or 101. But uh, they are the best. And if you're a new collector, try your best to either get this and get the issues in a graphic novel and soft cover, which is even cheaper than this. But if you have the money, if you come across it, I would say, you know, it's not a bad investment. And if you have money to burn and you're really looking to build up your collection, uh, if you can get your hands on issue 48 of Fantastic Four, uh, it's like gold. It it will never, I, my personal opinion, it will never decrease in value if you had to pay a little bit of money for it. Just make sure you get a good issue. Make sure the staples are good and, uh, you know, not too much cracking and uh, the pages look good. Uh, to give you a brief overview of my Fantastic Four collection, uh, I don't know how many issues I actually have, but I have like abundance of uh, Fantastic Four stuff. I basically have everything from, I think, roughly 40 to like 200 and something without uh, missing issues in there. This is like a whole bunch of random stuff. But um, uh, I am a big collector of the Fantastic Four, a big fan of collect Fantastic Four, I should say. But uh, yeah, but that's pretty much it. I just want to give you a little quick uh, tidbit on my comic books that got me started. 